uh, we are continuing our uh, sessions, our lectures regarding uh, calculation, how to technical calculation, how to build right uh, way to calculate position. And this time I prepare for you a position from the game uh, between two grandmasters, Arneson and Miles. So why dealing with a uh, really hard choice, kind of difficult choice? Uh, they have a hanging bishop here. They have a hanging rook here. They're down the pawn. So clearly they have to make a choice between playing rook d3 or g2. Make some kind of check and seven division. Or maybe to go to g5. What if we imagine uh, White had about, let's say, 15 minutes on the clock to make a decision? In fact, it was moved to the, uh, to the six. We're not sure how much time a White opponent had on the clock, uh, but I'm sure they didn't have that much time. But anyway, let's talk about making decisions, all right? So let's try to understand what's the right way to us to think, to make a move. Well, clearly, when this is the wild card position and you also have this discovery attack, I guess one thing you have to clearly understand, okay, where are we? Are we winning or are we losing? Anytime when you have this kind of situation, I always suggest first find a draw. If you find a draw, then go ahead, try to find a win. All right, that's the first advice, first tip. Second tip. If this is wild type position, then I guess we first responsible to cover ourselves against most force line. Let's see what's going on with this double check. All right, I guess white black king must take, obviously. Check, uh, I think it's only check because this uh, straight check doesn't work. We have simple cover, we're losing. So I guess that's the only check. And it looks like uh, if black king comes closer, then I can keep checking him. So he's trying to retrieve. And what we notice, if black king steps on this line, then I have to deal with this. But also, we must notice, these guys also know one line. So what if black king tried to run, and they will capture, followed by rook g8. Should I continue this line to calculate, or should I simply close this file and say, hey, this is bad, and I'm going to play something else? What's the right, what's the wrong? I'm sure White had reached his position. I'm sure they reached. And I'm sure what they might fail is, again, this is my, you know, I'm assuming, all right? They might see this way. They thought if they took by ED, then these two pawns kind of, two passers probably lose. If they take by CD, then after this, right? If you play B3, then black wins by force because these two pawns are running to the queen and this guy able to defend those two pawns. If you play, if you not play b3, then after c4, black control all possible entrances, right? And then black plan will be very simple. My king will run to d6, defend that, play f5, break through, win this guy, and these two passers win the game. So I guess uh, white actually figure out those things and kind of said to themselves, hey, I'm going to stop this. This is bad and I don't have much time on my clock, so I'm going to play something else. And they play, they choose to play rook g3 because they thought, okay, I'm going to cover this, and I'm going to save my bishop and cover that. And it's okay. You know, if this queen goes somewhere, I might jump here. And I guess I'm pretty much sure they didn't have much time to make a decision. Like I said, maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes, average for last four, five moves. But what they made a mistake, after queen c8, simply queen controls all possible entrance for white queen to be. And then black has actually a very simple plan to improve. I mean, 
it's a really simple plan. They want to play here, they want to play here, line up the pieces on the, I mean, on the H file and simply kill white. I guess uh, white tried their best to kind of, you know, create those uh, tricks here. But after this, step by step, they lost the game. So what it means, what's going on? Uh, was the last, I mean, up to the first position hopeless? So why didn't have a chance uh, to use this, this cover attack? No. What, why why the last the game? They made the wrong decision at the beginning. Because they should understand this way. You know, if I move my rook somewhere, somewhere, I'm simply down a pawn. You know, the role of my bishop here is just to defend this file, nothing else, because his productivity is zero, right? And this is a bad position for me to play. So speaking practically, even without seeing what's going on in this pawn endgame, you have to make this decision and go for it. And maybe, maybe you're missing something from the beginning. Maybe you missed something. Because at least here, there is some hopes. There is some hopes. And what actually white missed in this case. All right, let's do this. What white missed in this case, it's move ED. Well, CD was clearly bad. You can't give up two flanks. It's better for you to deal with one flank only. And I think the rule is this. Anytime when uh, two connected passers deal uh, with defended passer, the only way connected passer will win the game if defended passer not cross the middle. So basically speaking, if my defended passer on the fifth rank and I have only three squares to reach, to reach a queen, to propose my pawn, I don't think so. Black actually has a chance to win a game. So this is the failure of Grandmaster, not just calculation. It's also fair, but not knowing, like, you know, um, known, very well known position. If he will knew that rule, kind of, if he will knew that uh, endgame study, then I guess his decision uh, will be easy to make. But now let's double check. Let's double check ourselves because I'm going to show you another important rule. So let's say we play here. Obviously this part cannot be calculated from the beginning, but we can, we can try to play this. And I'm suggesting you guys to play this as well, just to practice. So let's say we stand, we we go, we play. I mean, this kind of move doesn't really matter, right? We play, and um, okay, black king could be reaching F, uh, f6, g5 square. Uh, black could play right away f4. Again, doesn't really matter because we're still going to get similar position. Uh, we still have this. And pretty much by force, we will reach in this position. Now, what's the rule? So you stay, you don't give up space yet, right? And now uh, for, for white, uh, for black, they have to make a decision. So best, they can always play F3. It's, it's very important because it's this. It's, I call this like uh, principles of shouldering. Uh, let me explain to you why. Like if pawn on d5, uh, let's say from white's perspective, if you put the uh, board, let's say uh, from white side, or it doesn't matter, let's say you put your board on the black side, doesn't matter. So right now I'm looking for the screen and I have a left side, my pawn on the left and the black pawn to the right. So I'm trying to keep uh, as most advanced pawn, right? In this case, I'm trying to keep the farthest pawn. So it means if this is the left side, right? This is the right side. This is the right side. Then this guy is far away from the d5 pawn, and I must advance f3 pawn, f pawn. So f3 is the best practical chance. Then the rule is after let's say f3 move, when you stand, when you go back, finally 
white and black team must make a progress. Otherwise, there is no way you can, you know, you can uh, uh, push your pawn, right? And after king g4, the next rule you have to know is always keeping your king on the same line as enemy's king. That's the only move for you to keep balance, to draw this game. Otherwise, you white will lose this. It's really important rule. And now, the problem is, if you play f3, f2, you can say, oh my gosh, this, this, and done, and win. No, it's wrong. This, this, and win. But the problem is, white can play smarter. King g2. And now, black actually lost. So this shouldering is also really important, because I control all the square, and that's it. Done. So you can't do that. You can't do that, and your only way is to play right away here. You must play e2. And I believe it's a drawish. I believe it's a drawish type positions because uh, at the time when black queen will take my pawn, I think uh, white queen will simply have uh, so many so many checks, and I think it's going to be a perpetual check, and it's going to be draw. If we go back here, and let's say uh, we will consider to play uh, this, right? Or it could happen from different move orders. Uh, uh, actually, no, not here. Uh, not here. Uh, it should be this way then. It should be here. Uh, let's say, yeah, let's say this way. If I'm playing this, if I'm playing that, and this. This is wrong for black because that's why it's important for them to always push the farthest pawn. Because in this case, uh, again, I'm going to keep my king on the same line. And now, same problem. If you play e2, then after this, black lost. Same thing, shouldering. And if you play here, then your problem is I have a check. Basically, uh, d7, this, 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 and you lost. That's why the rule for black, it's also important to always push uh, your f pawn. Your f pawn must be pushed here. Again, you can play this endgame many, many times. You can try to check this endgame many, many times. You can keep your, let's say, situations like this and uh, try to improve... Uh, you know your king first, but again, doesn't doesn't matter. You still I'm st you're still going to start to push your pawns. You're still going to start to push your pawn, and when you will push your pawn, you still will have these situations, and here you still will have to make a decision. So I guess that every time it will transpose this, and again, rule is very simple. At the time when black pawn will reach. Uh, will reach uh, six rank, or in this case is going to be third rank, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, you have to keep your king on the same line as enemy's king. All right. So why white fail in this game? Again, clearly because they make wrong, let's say, <clears throat> wrong decision at the beginning of this game. They use principle of elimination, but they eliminate the wrong line. So important to you guys to understand this. It's really important. Again, I call this sometimes actual desperation because I would never uh, seriously consider to play rook g3 because I would understand, okay, that type of position down the pawn is not good. But at least in this endgame, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I don't see something. And that's what exactly happening in this uh, uh, in this end game in this game. All right, guys. I hope you understood. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.